Hey. All right, so I've been waiting months for uh, some snow to fall so I could film my intro to the cozy uh, winter watercolor painting video that I'm going to make. Um, and here we are, it's snowing. So I just wanted to get a little bit of footage of this for some inspiration. And um, then we're going to head into the studio and paint our scene. I think in the scene I'm going to include a little cabin. I'm just taking a walk in the uh, woods here and looking for some ideas um, for things that I might include in the painting. So I'm noticing things like this. I kind of like uh, some of these little leaves and the way the snow is catching on them. Um, there's also snow catching on some of the tree trunks. I'll show you that here. So I don't know how much of all of that will make it into the painting, but it is nice to do something like this before starting, uh, just to get some ideas. Look at the way that the snow is catching on the, the bushes across the creek there. It looks kind of neat. Sometimes I feel actually a little guilty about walking on the newly fallen snow because it just looks so nice before it's got footprints stuck in it. Okay, well, it's getting cold out, so I guess I will head back inside and try to uh, use some of these ideas of things that we've seen in the painting. All right, we're back in the studio, and here's an overview of the materials that we're gonna to use today. So you can use some masking tape, that's optional if you wanna give your picture a nice border like this. You're gonna need a pencil and an eraser. We're gonna use a black fine uh, tip pen, a white jelly roll pen like this, or we might use this um, white Sharpie marker instead. Paper some water, ultramarine blue, and cadmium yellow watercolors, and a synthetic watercolor brush like this, paper towel, and a palette. So after filming my daytime snow um, inspirational footage, I realized that I really wanted to do more of a cozy nighttime scene like this, so I went back out and I filmed some nighttime snowfall. And you can see in the nighttime snow footage that the colors get basically reduced down to just a couple, which is uh, kind of a blue everywhere. And then when there's sources of incandescent light, we're gonna need a warm color, like a yellow. And then some places we're gonna have white, like these stars up here. By the way, this is cadmium yellow hue. It's not true cadmium. True cadmium is toxic, so the, the one marked hue is actually a little bit safer. So I'm gonna squeeze out some blue here. And I'm gonna squeeze out some cadmium hue. There. Something that's important to know about watercolors is that they are transparent. So unlike a latex paint or an acrylic paint, um, 
you can't paint a lighter watercolor on top of a darker one and expect it to show up because it is transparent. So let me show you what I mean. If I paint yellow across this blue stripe here, uh, I won't get yellow. As you can see there, you can still see the blue through the transparent yellow stripe. So for situations like this, where we want to have these bright yellow windows, what we have to do is actually leave the paper white in those spots. We can't go back and paint yellow on top of a dark blue and expect it to show up. Uh, let's see what happens if we paint the blue on top of the yellow stripe. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's kind of similar. It, it combines and it's almost like overlapping two pieces of colored glass. So you get some of the yellow and some of the blue combined in this area. Same thing here. Because watercolors are transparent, you can always make your painting get darker, but you can't really make your painting get lighter because as I said, putting a lighter color on top of a darker one uh, just combines the two. It doesn't actually get any lighter. So it's a good idea when you're working with watercolors to start pale and work increasingly dark. Here's an example of what I mean. So I already have this blue stripe here and I can add more blue on top. And as you can see, I increased the darkness. Okay, but there's no way that I could take this dark blue and make it get lighter like that using transparent watercolors. All right, I think we can start the painting. Let's put this aside here. And by the way, there was some, um, I painted this with uh, a student a number of years ago. Um, she made her own version and I made my own version. We kind of collaborated and came up with this scene. Um, but I just happened to see online an artist named Elizabeth Colwell, who was an American artist working in the early part of the 20th century, and she made a scene that was very similar to this, so I think I'm going to use that as inspiration. So like I said, this is optional, but you can use masking tape around the edge to give it a nice border like this one has. I'm going to use my pencil and I'm going to put a light horizon line here. I'm kind of doing this from memory. Um, and then in Colwell's uh, woodblock print, she had a little structure that was about here. Now you might want to draw more lightly than I'm drawing. I'm drawing dark so that you can see this on the video. Okay, this, this part of the roof is just going to be a parallelogram. And we're going to drop the wall down like that. Now hers didn't have glowing windows like this one does, so I'm going to, I'm going to add in some windows here. And we're going to have to remember to paint around those windows and let the paper stay white so that later on we can come back and add yellow in. Um, if we don't keep it nice and bright white here, then we won't be able to make the windows look yellow. And maybe I'll put a little door there. There's a chimney here. And then she had some trees. And the way I'm gonna do the trees is I'm just gonna start off with these kind of Y shapes like this. And then we're going to add on to that later. And then she had a couple little lines like this here to kind of indicate the snow was mounting up. I think the moon was over here. So the moon is big enough that we can paint around it when we do the sky. These smaller dots like this, we're going to do a little bit of a cheat. So on this one, I actually used a latex based, um, what's called a masking fluid. It's basically like a liquid rubber 
that you paint on here and you let it dry. And then when you paint your blue sky like this, the paint doesn't stick to the rubber. And then later on you remove the rubber and you have these um, spots left over. Um, but in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to, like I said, do a little cheat. We're going to use this white Sharpie paint marker or a white jelly roll instead. Okay, so remembering what I said about working from light to dark, um, we want to try to hit things like this here that are very pale blue, maybe not the very darkest blues just yet. So I'm just going to come in here and kind of get a little bit of this paint ready to go ahead of time. Just adding some water into it and trying to get kind of a smooth consistency. And then what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to try to leave this area mostly white and this part of the roof mostly white. And I'm going to save the blue for the sky because I think that's how she did hers. Um, there's a little trick we can do, which is called laying a wash. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make all of this sky area damp with clear water. And maybe you can't see that on the video, but that's what I'm doing. Now I'm having to move my head around a little bit so that I can see the reflection of the water in my lamp to make sure that the paper is actually wet. I'm going to paint carefully around the moon. This print was called Winter Moonlight and she made it in 1916. Bye bye. The reason we're laying a wash is because this will help us do what's called a wet on wet method or a wet into wet method where the, the paint will flow more smoothly, hopefully through this area of the of the paper and give us something that looks more like a, a sky. If we didn't do this, then we might end up with a lot of hard paint lines, which is not really how a sky looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna pick some of this up. I'm gonna put more paint at the top and a little bit less as we go down. see how the paint is spreading through this. Now I have to be careful when I get to the moon here because I don't want to I don't want to paint over that and lose the white paper there. Remember in watercolor the whitest white is the paper itself not white paint. Although when we do our stars we're going to cheat a little bit and use some white paint. perfectly smooth and that's okay but you want to work while the whole area is still damp maybe draw the brush across like this to even it out somewhat I'll add in more paint Oops. on the top here okay and now I want to avoid this portion of the roof You can see my wash is drying out a little bit. Now I want it to be light at the bottom. So I'm just going to come in with some clear water and kind of spread across what I have already. Avoiding that roof. Okay, we're going to let that dry. If it needs to be darker, we can come back and do the same thing as a separate layer on top of the first layer. I think I want it to be darker than that. So I'm gonna go over it again. And instead of laying a clear wash first, I'm gonna just see if I can do it straight away um, by always keeping 
the leading edge of this wet. I don't want to have any part of this dry out until I'm finished because if it dries out I'm gonna I'm gonna get a hard edge and I don't want that. I think it actually got a little bit lighter as it dried so it won't hurt to go a little bit darker than what I think I need. This is plenty wet. You can see here where a little bit of my paint ran down into the white. Um, you know, that's fine. That was a mistake, but that's going to stay there. There's not really a way to, to take that off once it happens. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is, I think in the original print, there was, there was a little bit of a kind of a shadow down here. And I want to make up a very watery blue for that. And I think I want it to look different than the sky. So what I'm going to do, since we only have two colors, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of yellow. I don't want to make it super green, but I just want it to make it a little bit different than that other blue. And I don't want it to be real dark, so I want to use a lot of water here. And I'm just going just gonna to kind of drag the brush across like this. And on my paper, it's kind of the water's, um, or the paint's kind of breaking up on the surface of the watercolor paper. And I like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it like that. That's called scumbling. So if you if you're careful and you move the brush across like this, you get this kind of scratchy look. Gives it some texture. Okay, now let's work carefully on the house. I'm gonna darken the walls, and I'm gonna very carefully paint around those windows because I want them to stay nice and bright white paper. I want to make the walls, I think, darker than the sky. Now, if I were to paint this while the sky was still wet, the, the paint would bleed together. And the color of this wall would flow up into that sky area. I think my brush is too wet, so I'm going to use the rag to pull some of the color out. Very carefully paint around each window here. with one brush stroke and I can do the above part that way too. Okay. And I'm gonna 
put this chimney in. Make it a little dark. And maybe I'll even do the trunks of these trees. Like that. I noticed that my shadow down here mostly disappeared, so I'm gonna do it again. Go a little darker this time. I'm holding the brush kind of flat when I do that, like this. I'm dragging the brush across the paper that way, rather than using the point. Just for this section down here. Now we can go in and we can use um, this fine black pen. You can use a Micron, fine tip Sharpie. This one's called a Copic Multiliner. And we're gonna add in some details. I think I'm gonna start with the tree. So I'm, I painted the trunks with a little bit of blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a black line on either side of, of the blue trunk. And then maybe I'll kind of scribble in between a little bit, some dots, some little dashes to give it a little bit of texture. And I'm going to get this main kind of uh, skeleton of the tree drawn out like this. shape or maybe you could fork a couple times like this okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to go up and up and we're going to add branches kind of reach like this to each tree and then off of these branches we're going to add some smaller ones like this on both sides Sometimes the way you hold the pen, you can get an even finer mark. And let's outline the roof here. trying to make this these lines real perfectly straight. I'm going to make them be a little bit kind of broken up and a little wiggly to give it kind of an organic feel to it. And go around the chimney here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken the house even more by putting some parallel lines, some hatching that goes down through here. There's a door here. I'm going to outline that door. And above and below and then in between this should give some nice contrast and really make it look like there's a light inside okay now in the one in the print by Elizabeth Colwell um, this horizon line is not perfectly straight it's, it kind of goes up and down a little bit like a hill, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to up like this, and down, and up again like this, and up, and up, and then she's got some little kind of smaller bushes and like a little kind of a baby tree over here. And then there's a split rail fence, which she does by putting, looks like, two parallel lines and then a post. So two rails and then a post, two 
rails and there's a post back there. Two rails and a post. And then the fence continues over here. Like this. And it kind of runs down like that. And then these lines uh, in the hill that we put in earlier, we put them in. Like I said, I'm trying not to be too you know, precious and careful about this. I want this to have an, or an organic feel to it. All right. And of course, you can you know, put variations and do this however you imagine it. It doesn't have to be just like this one. Now I'm going to add some stars to the sky like this. So I'm going to use my white Sharpie. Um, this is a paint pen that you shake like this. You hold your hold your thumb on the cap to make sure it doesn't go everywhere. Shake it a few times. And then I'm going to plunge the pen like this until it soaks with uh, paint. You'll see paint coming out eventually. Alright, so I'm going to add a couple dozen stars spaced around like this. All right, and the last thing that I want to do is add some yellow paint into my windows. I want to make sure my brush is nice and clean and doesn't have any of this blue in it so that the yellow is nice and bright. Okay, there you have it. So, let's pull the tape off and see what we got. When you pull the tape off, um, pull the tape away from the painting. You don't want to pull the tape toward the painting just in case it rips the paper. And you want to pull it slowly and carefully away. There we go. What do you think of that? So a little quick watercolor, cozy cabin scene inspired by um, this work that I created with my student and also inspired by the American artist Elizabeth Colwell.